What we're going to do here is we're going to work the, the trapping now. We're going to use the back of the empty hand to trap, but other than that, we're going to be the exact same. We're going to follow the knife in. We're going to use our uh, slipping block on angle one and then come up with an angle uh, 11. And then we're going to, uh, in the middle of that, we're going to be trapping. And when we get back up top, we're going to add the finishing angle here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of each angle. We're not going to be doing uh, zones three and four now. So we're going to be doing a couple of each angle just to make sure you're comfortable before you go on to the next angle. Again, just throw angle one you know, like, until I say go to the next angle. So you see this hand is out here. I'm just bending the wrist back a little bit to keep this from coming up. And if you were to try to go down, I could just move my elbow down with him as I'm finishing this off. And again, we're just going through these. This is really just an introduction to trapping. We're going to do a little Wing Chun later in the course, uh, around lesson seven, I think. And then we'll get a lot more of that sensitivity training going. But right now we're just trying to get the hand out there and avoid cutting that hand while it's out there, while getting that finishing off blowing. Uh, go So here I've still got to, I've still got to, uh, I've still got to hollow out, kind of attack that blade from above as it comes at me. I got to let it go by before I can even think about trapping it. But again, the trap or the catch is to uh, keep his hand from being freed up while we continue to cut him up. Again, I just get out of the way sometimes. It's just not there for me. Go for a nice uh, angle six on him and rip that thing out with a C cut. Uh, it was like a static block. It was okay. It's kind of static block when you set it popping out. Make sure you're getting away from the knife. Really good. Stop. That's it. I'm in. Stop. Now let that hand follow it out on that first angle when you first come here. So we're here like this, this hand is posted up. All I need to do is worry about keeping this elbow right here, keeping this right here. As I turn here, that's where it's just gonna come out. It's gotta come out right behind me. 
They both have to get moving at the same time. It's just that this one is going to slightly be delayed to coming out right. That's it. I'm still, yeah, you're still one, two, and then this guy's coming. Because you're getting, uh, you're having a, yeah, you're just late to get it out. And again, just push it out this way. Here it is here, just push it out. It's going to be right there, just to push out. And as you get, you know, start leaning forward, coming down from the top, you want to slash from above when you can. I'm going to go. Stop. Stop. Now finish that angle. I'm going to do it. Stop. Stop. 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 Now what's happening here is you're actually doing a zone one with this hand. That's almost what it is, it's a zone one with this hand. So again, you're getting plenty of training with your right hand. I mean, when we come up here, uh, we're zone, excuse me, I said zone one, I mean zone a zone two. two. Zone yeah, because you're coming here like this, so you got your zone one, well here comes that zone two. And that's where we're getting two hands into the fight. Movement, uh, defanging the snake, employing a second layer of defense. to roll this over this way. It's so it's like this, so it's trapping me better. Okay. It's not more of a trap, it's just a better trap. This is trapping on a, on a yeah, 180 degree angle. Well, no, on like a 270. Ready to play. Stop. Ready to play. Stop. Ready to play. Stop. Ready to play. Kill that. Ready to play. Stop. We're gonna kill it. Stop. Stop. You good? Yeah. Go with it. Three. I'm gonna kill it. Stop. Stop. Get out of the way. Pivot towards me. So you're, you want to get your fighting center back on the center line, which is here. Right, so it's a step and drag still. You're stepping here, and you're dragging here. That's gonna be a better way to do it. Perfectly. And then because of things are changed, all of a sudden, you get into a discomfort zone. Like I think he's uncomfortable, uh, Scott might be a little uncomfortable with that blade coming way up at his head. And because he has to lean back, this hand leans back too much and it forgets to go out. And that's just, that's just natural human nature. Uh, so you just have to work your way through that. Yeah, I'm gonna kill you. Stop. There, that's what we need right now. I'm gonna kill you, stop. See, when I, when I do the big one right at your head, you get stuck back there. Now what you want to do, stop leaning back as much as you can. Now come to me with a 12. Stop, sit down. See where I'm here? I still want to be leaning forward. You always want to, whenever you can, you want to get on top of it, instead of being back here on your heels. Once you're on your heels, it's too hard to get your movement coming back, and that's your problem here. So jump further, more of a bunny hop, and then try to get back down here, where you're on top of things, and this is going to go out easier. Okay. And I'm going to go. Stop. Now the most important thing is, the ones you're having the hardest time with, which right now he's having a hard time with this 12, because it's all up in his face, and he's definitely got to get out of the way. Again, the way he's throwing the technique is, we're getting ready to collide over here. He's almost moving into the path of the angle. So that's the hardest one to, for him to avoid. So this is the one he has to work hardest on to make sure he gets good movement out of the line of that attack. Now here's the thing. Once you see that this is the hardest one to stop and you have to do the most to get out of the away of the angle of the attack, this is the movement you have to use on all angles. Because you can't say, oh, this is a, this is a uh, three. This is an easy one. I'll just step here. This is an easy one. I won't do much work. Well, guess what? On the day the real knife fight starts, you don't know what angle he's coming with. So your only choice is to make sure you get out of the way of the one that you're going to have the most problem with. And that's where you have to train yourself to at a minimum. So again, when you come with a 12, this is the one that I have to be ready. See how far I am away from here? This is the one that I really have to be ready for. And now, bam, 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 whatever I'm gonna do here, okay? So that's what you really have to think about. 
trying to get everything a big jump. Now, a lot of times I don't jump that big with my 12 because I'm pretty good at blocking the 12. So I catch that early. Okay? And also with the way I'm going to knife fight in general, I'm going to catch stuff a lot earlier, which we're going to. So sometimes I don't uh, give the best example because I'm working on another on another drill, yeah. on another lesson, on another level further down. You know? But for you, that's what you really have to address. Just make sure you get out of the way, but making sure you have a platform that you can attack from. Okay? So a couple of drops. I'm going to kill you. Stop. And with you, that big body, it's just leaning in. It's going to move you a foot closer to you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to kill you. Stop. I'm going to kill you. Stop. I'm like moving way up. Right, which is what you want. Well, the further you can come towards my flank, the better. But with a 12, that's a problem because that movement puts you right in the uh, angle of the blade. So you really have to get on top of that blade earlier. You know what I'm saying? And any time you can work on these techniques, which we'll really get into that into the next one, we're going to start trying to catch that angle earlier and earlier and earlier, as early as you can. But well, again, when I become a real fighter, what do you mean two? Uh, it depends on your style. I'm a one. I'm going one all the time. There's never any question in my mind. Where am I going? I'm going this way. Unless there's a wall here, I'm going this way. That's the way I'm going to be. Okay? This way I don't have to think. I don't have to try to interpret this angle as it's coming at me and say to myself, do I do a one or do I do a two? That's going to be a lapse. Okay? Now, if I've trained and I've trained and I've trained and I've done this for three years, okay, I'm probably going to be able to tell where this thing is going until he throws a fake at me. Right. Then I'm going to be screwed. Maybe he's going to fake me into a zone two so that he can now throw the angle that's the worst, uh, that's the hardest for me to defend with a zone two. Okay, that's a smart fighter, right? So yeah, now he's going to get me walking right into this thing. Okay, and there's guys out there that are thinking at that level. Okay, they may do it by mistake. Okay, you don't know. But here's the thing. If I know I'm always going to one and I'm prepared for all 12 angles on one, I don't need to make any other decisions, just go one. Oh, there's a wall here. Well, I've prepared for all 12 angles from zone two also, so I can zone two that also, okay? So I've got them all covered. I don't have to think, am I going this way or am I going that way? No, when you move, I'm going one way. If you faint, I'm just going again to that direction. If it's a multiple faint, I'm just going again to this direction. And when something finally comes in, it's going to meet a defang and a secondary uh, block. That's the thing. That's like I say, you know, when, you, when I jump those little things and then I get like this, this way I'm really going to be in the fight. My feet are going to be going. And I'm going to be ready to hop, hop, hop if he comes at me with a, a three angle attack and I miss on the first one. Well, I got to be ready to hop again because that second one's coming. And that's what you really have to think about. That's why that movement is so important. So again, there's never bad movement if it gets you off the line of attack. Okay? If it gets you off his angle of attack, his line of attack, that's good. Whether you defang or not, he has missed you because you got off the line of attack. Now, because you got off the line of attack, you now control the center line because your fighting center is on the center line. I have to turn before I can attack you. And in that moment, that's when you're going to launch your counterattack. Okay? And that's where you're going to have your, most, your greatest chance for uh, success. Now, if you don't, well, it doesn't matter because when I get back on line and I attack you again, you're just going to jump off my line of attack again, okay? off of my uh, fighting center again. You're going to move the center line again. And I'm always going to be behind you in this movement. And eventually, something's going to happen. You're not going to get up a line of attack well, or you're going to get that cut in before I get back on the center line, before I get my fighting center back on the center line. That's the whole strategy behind this system, okay? Where movement, movement becomes the most important. And then because we're moving, he has to move into us, and that's where we defang the snake, if we didn't get it on the first try. You know what I'm saying? And that's, again, you know, come at me with a... Uh, Tell me with just an angle one. Okay, so I jumped too far. Well, look, I have this one coming back up, right? If your knife is still out there, I have two shots at it because I've trained this in. Okay, that's the big thing. So that's, I mean, we just have level after level of of, uh, of reserve or level after level of protection because of the system that we're uh, training you. In. But that's uh, that's whole thing. That's whole concept. Behind it. Okay. And let's see. I mean, that's one of the big fundamentals is that we aren't defending on one. Just throw a nice slow uh, angle six at my face. This isn't what I'm relying on. Okay. When I say throw an angle six at my face, I mean literally try to put the knife on my face. Okay. This isn't the only thing I'm depending on. Oops, I missed. You got me, right? Now go ahead and see. So if I start moving, go ahead. 
if I keep moving, you know, now I start adding this, now I have a whole lot better chance to get you somewhere. You see what I'm saying? Because I have these multiple levels. Now throw another one. You know, now I start catching this thing, and now I can just <laughs> go to town on it, which I would never want to do. I would want to throw it yesterday. But that's what the multiple layers do. And again, if once I use one multiple layer, I can use it again. I can just keep using it again and again and again. You see what I'm saying? So that's the nice thing about this system. But that's why I say either be a guy one or be a, be a zone one guy or be a zone two guy because it takes the thought process out of your mind. Now all you got to do is get the hell out of that way and hope there's something you can have. And if there's not, well, just get ready for the next one. It's coming again. Now, he might get tricky and try to throw one of those hard angle ones at you. You might try to throw, I mean, a zone, you might throw an angle that's hard for a zone one to defend. Right. But what he doesn't know is you practiced against that already. So now you throw that zone four, uh, that angle four, throw that angle four, so, you know, here I am there. You're still in trouble. You're still going to be screwed. You're not going to be able to throw something at me that I haven't seen. And that's why we make sure you get to see all the angles. Okay. So again, uh, 12, one more time. 12 at you. I'm coming to you here, 12. And uh, I'm going to go to the top. See, that's what we want right there. I believe you're going to get me somewhere. You're going to get me somewhere. I mean, you're staying in all tight. You can reach out a little bit as you get more comfortable. You're trying to keep that tight little, uh, yeah. that tight little package, which is good when you pivot. But when we have blades out here, you might have to reach out to get what you want. Okay. And again, once you get what you want, you know, then we're going to finish the fight. Okay. So anyway, it's, uh, so going to uh, right hand, uh, yeah. And uh, you're going to kill me. Okay. Drop to that. Yeah, that's all we're really worried about right now. Okay. Drop to that. Okay. Drop to that. Now, one thing I do is when I do have to lean back, I make sure I go down here. Right. And I lean back here because that, that center of the gravity makes it easy for me to use momentum to come back in and get over the top. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Now, I'm going to step out the side. You have to lean. Step out the side. 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 Step and now it's real hard to get going back to this direction. But if when you do that, you take this leg up a little higher, okay? So now as I get here, I can bring everything falling back in before my leg gets wrapped. Okay, that's called violent knees, which we work a lot on in the, uh, in the empty hand thing. But it's helpful here too. I mean, we did do it with our lunge attack, right? So basically we're doing, a, we're still doing a, uh, a lunge attack. We're just doing it off to the side here. So watch, watch the way when I lean back, how my, how when I land and my drag pivots everything back down, even though I'm going to start way out to the side. So I'm here like this. See the way that works? That's because when I landed, I landed low, and then when I did this, this, this leg kicked this way, and I just kept everything stiff, and it leans right back in. So now I'm back on top of it, and now guess what? Now I'm in that platform where I can move forward again. And uh, so you're still coming over. Stop, sit down. Stop sitting. Stop sitting. Stop. So again, don't get overwhelmed with, oh, I have to make a perfect catch. Oh, I have to have a perfect trap. No, sometimes you're so far out of the way, the only thing that's going to work is this. Now you keep this hand back up here, as it comes at you. Well, there I've got it. And now I've got that knife right out of the way where I want it. It's all designed in for the contingencies that can occur. That's the best thing about this. Is when contingencies come up, most systems go to shit. But this one has been designed to capture and have a, a contingency plan for each contingency. It's all built in. Okay, so let's see. Yeah. That was our night in the night. You and all your things. And again, I went, I, that time I actually trapped and I went to a catch right yeah. now. One of the best ways to catch is to trap it. Now it's not moving. Is that going to make it easier to catch? It's going to make it a hell of a lot easier to catch. I'm trying to catch that while it's moving. That's hard. You trap it. Now you've got it hooked in here, right? Now I just roll over the top. He's screwed. What we're going to do here is we're going to work the, the trapping now. We're going to use the back of the empty hand to trap. But other than that, we're going to be the exact same. We're going to follow the knife in, we're going to use our uh, slipping block on angle one and then come up with an angle uh, 11 and then we're going to, uh, in the middle of that, we're going to be trapping and when we get back up top, we're going to add the finishing angle here. 
And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of each angle. We're not going to be doing uh, zones three and four now. So we're going to be doing a couple of each angle just to make sure you're comfortable before you go on to the next angle. You can just throw angle one you know, like, until I say go to the next angle. So you see this hand is out here. I'm just bending the wrist back a little bit to keep this from coming up. And if you were to try to go down, I can just move my elbow down with him as I'm finishing this off. And again, we're just going through these. This is really just an introduction to trapping. We're going to do a little Wing Chun later in the course, uh, around lesson seven, I think. And then we'll get a lot more of that sensitivity training going. But right now, we're just trying to get the hand out there and uh, avoid cutting that hand wall. I've still got to, I've still got to, uh, still got to hollow out, kind of attack that blade from above as it comes at me. I got to let it go by before I can even think about trapping it. But again, the trap or the catch is to uh, keep his hand from being freed up while we continue to cut him up. 